beaming with joy, the Queen kicks off her Platinum Jubilee. On the all-important balcony, she was surrounded by family and joined by thousands on the streets to watch a spectacular fly pass. They've come to see the one British monarch, the only British monarch, who's reigned for 70 years. But tonight, the Queen has reluctantly pulled out of tomorrow's big event after experiencing discomfort. From street parties to parades, how the country started its jubilee celebrations and... ...why the national anthem is heading into the pop charts. From Buckingham Palace, this is ITV News with Lucrezia Millerini. Good evening. If looks say it all then for the Queen today, was a great success, making a balcony appearance here at Buckingham Palace, surrounded by generations of her family. She positively beamed with pride and joy as she watched a spectacular tribute from the RAF. Well, tonight, beacons were lit across the country and the Commonwealth to mark her 70 years of duty. But the Queen has pulled out of tomorrow's Thanksgiving service after experiencing discomfort today. Our Royal Editor Chris Shipp reports on day one of the Platinum Jubilee. It has been a long day, but with the help of her walking stick, the Queen did press ahead with the beacon lighting at Windsor this evening. But by all accounts, the Jubilee events have taken their toll. She lit the beacons, but the palace said the Queen suffered some discomfort today and had pulled out of the big Thanksgiving service tomorrow. Despite tonight's news, this is how most people will remember today, when the Queen showed the world what celebrations for a 70-year reign look like. A balcony moment watched by tens of thousands on the mall as this 96-year-old monarch marked a moment in British history none of her predecessors has ever achieved. The Trooping the Colour ceremony began in the morning when carriages carrying the royal family, some for the very first time, made their way from Buckingham Palace. Beginner's enthusiasm from the youngest Cambridge Prince Louis was swiftly managed by his older sister. At Horse Guards Parade, it was the Prince of Wales who took the salute today on behalf of the Queen, who did not come to the parade ground. Also absent from all events today, but for entirely different reasons, Prince Andrew. As for the Sussexes, they were at Horse Guards, but seen by just one camera. Harry and Meghan were back with his family for the first time since they left for California two years ago, but kept, as they promised, a low profile. Back at Buckingham Palace, as the household cavalry returned, the Queen, for her comfort, took the salute from there. And then it was time for the people. So the carriages have come down, the military have come down. It's now the turn for everybody else. They've come to see the one British monarch, the only British monarch, who's reigned for 70 years. And they came not just from the British Isles, but from all over the world. We are representing Portugal. Portugal. So you're Portugal, yeah. Paris, and where are you? Pakistan. Right. Exactly. All the way from the US for All the way from the US for Is this. it worth it? Yes, it is. She's not Indonesia. even your queen. Huh? Oh, she's our queen. Not on paper, but she's our queen. I've been for the 50th, I've been for the 60th, and I've been for the 70th. Oh, you better hurry up and get down there. And I'm losing go. my space. Go, go, go. A tribute to the queen's 70 years flew overhead. The queen enjoyed it. Her great-grandson Louis a little less so. But in the skies above Buckingham Palace and on the streets below, they were celebrations for a platinum jubilee the country will not see for many years to come. Tonight, taking his cue from his grandmother at Windsor, Prince William watched the principal beacon, a tree, light up outside the palace. This was always the plan, but for the Queen, tomorrow's plan has now changed. And Chris joins me now. And Chris, that announcement from the palace about the Queen tomorrow was unexpected. 
Yeah, unexpected in the sense that Buckingham Palace and perhaps everybody else was hoping that she would be able to go to St Paul's Cathedral this morning. But remember, we're getting used to this now. The new normal with the Queen is that she's only going to go to an event if she can. We might not get that kind of news until quite late in the day, hence uh, what happened tonight. I think tomorrow, it's the journey from Windsor Castle all the way to St Paul's Cathedral. It's the length of time she has to sit in St Paul's Cathedral, so we perhaps shouldn't be surprised. And not for the first time this year, we're going to have another look into the future, another glimpse into the future, because Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, will be representing his mother, as he did, for example, at the state uh, opening of Parliament. Let's remember, though, she did get through today. She made two balcony appearances. She appeared tonight in Windsor Castle. She lit that beacon, which led to the tree yes, here yeah. being lit as well. Um, so, you know, I think she, you know, we just have to see what she'll be able to do going forward. But tomorrow, yes, the plans have changed. All right, Chris, for now, thank you. Well, across the UK, millions enjoyed the special bank holiday as villages, towns and cities staged their own celebration. Here's Hannah Miller on how the nation parties. From the brass band striding out along the streets of Truro to horses parading in Great Yarmouth <laughs> and heritage trams rolling through Blackpool, the great British weather had got the memo about the first day of Platinum Jubilee celebrations and in Sheffield thousands turned out to party in the park. I think it's really nice that she's been alive for so long and that's why people are celebrating it. At this Leicester street party people of all ages wanted to celebrate the Queen's reign including some who remember the coronation. I think she's one lovely lady. I think over the years she's had a lot to put up with. She's probably the best queen we'll ever get. And while there was no sign of a corgi at this garden party for dogs, the queen would surely be pleased to see that even her four-legged friends were wanting to get a slice of the action. This is Jimmy. He's been out today enjoying the sunshine. It's time that we've lost over the last couple of years, so to be able to come to something like this, meet new people and just enjoy, relax, it's even more appreciated. And with parties set to continue through the weekend, from this Bristol kitchen there are plans to hand out 3,000 portions of Jubilee biryani. But would it be to Her Majesty's taste? Definitely fit for a queen or a king. It's got her favourite vegetables. The spices are wonderful. So I'm hoping that if she did taste it, she would love it. As communities come together and take pride in flying the flag, the Queen has perhaps got her wish that many happy memories will be created. Hannah Miller, ITV News. The Queen's birthday honours have recognised more than a thousand men and women, all said to reflect the Queen's own invaluable qualities. They include famous faces from showbiz, sport and politics, plus local fundraisers who've gone above and beyond. Martha Fairley reports. From the man who keeps the wheels turning on the royal carriages to England's most senior nurse and from a 104-year-old dance teacher to the 11-year-old fundraising twins. They are just some of the 1,100 people being honoured for their outstanding service to their community and country. Actor Damien Lewis becomes a CBE for his services to drama and charity. He and his wife Helen McCrory, who died last year from cancer, provided meals for NHS workers during the pandemic. And after the Queen's visit to the set of Coronation Street last year, one of the soap stars Anthony Cotton is being made an MBE for his off-screen work supporting Armed Forces Mental Health. Prizes and everything are really, really nice. This is really beautiful and I've and I've loved knowing that it was going to happen, but the greatest reward you can have is just to help somebody. 92-year-old charity knitter Margaret Seaman, who created a model of the Queen's Norfolk resident Sandringham House, has been honoured with a British Empire medal. I just couldn't believe it. I just passed the letter to my daughter and she had a good look at it and read it. She had a cry and I had a cry. But it is an honour. It's a really wonderful award for me to get, especially at my age. I really need it. While Bonnie Tyler, who rose to fame with her 80s power ballads, becomes an MBE in a Jubilee honours list that spans the decades and generations. Martha Fairley, ITV News.
Now, the national anthem has been as constant as the Queen's reign, and to mark this jubilee, a new version has been recorded by Alfie Bow and Sarah Brightman. They've partnered with an NHS choir with profits going to charity. Our entertainment reporter, Richie Davter, explains. A new take on a song that we all know the words to. My Alfie Bow and Sarah Brightman have re-recorded God Save the Queen to get Her Majesty to the top of the charts. She's been serving this country and been our monarch for 70 years. I mean, that's an incredible thing. She's an amazing woman. They've teamed up with an NHS choir and the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. To celebrate Her Majesty, celebrate the nation, pay thanks to the Red Cross and to the NHS, then, you know, we're doing our duty. Today went really well. Absolutely amazing. 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 <laughs> the release also comes with a remastered version of the national anthem from the Queen's 1953 coronation. Chorister James Wilkinson was just 12 years old, but remembers it clearly. He had been instructed to watch the conductor all the time because he was a fierce man. Uh, but I was determined to watch the Queen, so I leant forward. I saw a wonderful view. The Archbishop raised the crown really high and lowered it on the Queen's head. And it was very dramatic, and everybody shouted, God save the Queen. So I, I remember that very vividly. Alfie says it's a chance to honour the Queen. I think we just have to really, really power together to celebrate a lady who has led this country in such a triumphant way. You know, you turn 100, you get a letter from her, you know? Um, if she turns 100, I wonder if she'll write to herself. I'm not sure about that. One, you know. <laughs> the national anthem's in the charts and surely on repeat this weekend. Rishi Davda, ITV News. And a final word from our role editor, Chris Ship. Chris, Platinum Jubilee is something many of us are ever unlikely to see again. You know, I think that's a point worth making. You know, yeah. Queen Victoria, who's got a big memorial in front of uh, Buckingham Palace here, had a diamond jubilee, but this Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, is the only one in our history ever to have a platinum. And I think that point was not lost on the people who were here today, those I joined uh, on the mail. They knew they were taking part in, in a historic moment. Uh, and Chris, we know that we're not going to see the Queen tomorrow, but when might we then? So, not St Paul's Cathedral tomorrow. There is the Epsom Derby on Saturday. Perhaps you might find the ability to go to that. There's a party on Saturday night. Don't expect her at that. And then Sunday, a big pageant. We may, just may, get another balcony appearance on Sunday afternoon, if she can make it. All right, well, Chris, thank you so much. And uh, thank you for watching. That is it from me and the whole Jubilee Bank holiday team here tonight. Good night.